Hi, welcome along to another video. Links to the articles are in the information section of this video. So we start in the UK's Guardian newspaper. James Lovelock, the biosphere and I are both in the last 1% of our lives. James Lovelock is the um, inventor of, or as they're saying, the father of the Gaia theory. I'm sure you know what that is. Do you believe humanity can invent something to stabilise the climate? Well, we better had, or we are doomed. I like Edward Teller's suggestion of a sunshade in a heliocentric orbit that would diffuse a few percent of sunlight from the Earth. You would hardly notice it was there, if it could be done. And I think a big NASA program could almost certainly do it. It could save our bacon. It seems a more outrageous and difficult proposition than other geoengineering projects, like putting sulphur into the stratosphere, but I prefer it. You could make it so that if anything went wrong, it would automatically collapse. But overall, I don't think we should start messing about with the Gaia system until we know a hell of a lot more about it. It is beginning to look as if renewable energy, wind and solar, if properly used, may be the answer to the energy problems of humanity. So someone who's come up with the Gaia theory thinks actual physical engineered sunshades should be put up into space via someone like NASA. And it's more outrageous and difficult than solar radiation management. But he likes it. And if anything went wrong, you could do it so it automatically collapses. So a physical structure in space automatically collapsing, and then what happens to it? Does it just sit there in space with all the other space debris? Do you bring it back to Earth? What? He's 100 years old, that's why they're speaking to him, and also probably explains that he is 100 years old. Uh, enough of that, idiocy. Let's move on swiftly. Advancing Earth and space science. Distinct change of supercooled liquid cloud properties by aerosols from an aircraft-based seeding experiment. Using the data from a cloud seeding experiment, this study investigates the differences of cloud properties between, before and after the cloud seeding for a supercooled liquid cloud. Over to Channel News Asia. Indonesia on high alert for forest fires until November as dry season is delayed. That's from the Environment Minister. As you know, they've been carrying out weather modification and it was said it would be done up till the end of September. To prevent the fires from recurring this year, the Ministry is focusing on improving the technical weather modification system. So going by the statement that um, things are going to be taken care of up to the end of November, it looks like the weather modification is going to be continuing in Indonesia up until the end of November. It's currently occurring now. One from the past, Project Skywater. We go into this report, the history of rainmaking. We found this Project Skywater 1967 annual report in the Journal of Hydrology from Science Direct. From the report, a common method of rainmaking was burning. Not until the 19th century did weather modification experiments take on the air of scientific authority. James Pollard Espy, considered by some to be the father of the US Weather Bureau, devised a theory of explaining how clouds formed that put him well ahead of his time, noting that hot air expanded as it rose, resulting in a drop in temperature and condensation of air vapour. He predicted that man could generate a cloud if he created hot air rising in a column. So if we look at James Pollard Espy, he was born in May 1785. He died in 1860. So he was developing theories pre-1860. He was also known as the Storm King. So the politics of Project Skywater, a long and varied history of rainmaking, then preceded Project Skywater. Reclamation did not originate the idea of rainmaking or usher it into the modern era. Rather, it gradually assumed a leading role in determining how extensively rainmaking would be used in the future. In 1961, Congress appropriated $100,000 
out of the 1962 Public Works Appropriations Bill for research to increase rainfall through cloud seeding. On the Weather Modification History Facebook page, they've got a video, it came up in the search results as well, and there's a video, you don't have to be signed in to watch this. The link's in the uh, info section, and there's a CBC News Archive, Project Skyfire, 1959. So that's worth looking into as well. So Project Skyfire, Project Skywater, over now at the British Library, there are quite a few um, books available, some as far back as the 1960s. Over to the American Meteorological Society, a research article from 1967, Cloud Seeding Experiment Using Common Salt, an experiment on artificial stimulation of rain using a warm cloud seeding technique. If we go over to the State University of New Jersey, Rutgers, geoengineering is just a partial solution to fight climate change. The technology's regional impacts depend on how much greenhouse gas emissions are reduced. In Mintfo, over to the Philippines, 900th Air Force Weather Group arrives in Isabella for cloud seeding. The team is carrying out cloud seeding operations over Region 2 in partnership with the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Soils and Water Management. A total of 10 hours of cloud seeding operations will be conducted over the vicinity of Isabella to help increase the water supply in the said area for domestic consumption. 200 sacks or 5,000 kilograms of seeding agent, salt, will be dispersed during the conduct of the entire cloud seeding mission. This is from the Borneo Post in 2015, so that's what it looks like when you're mixing up 80 kilograms of sodium chloride, salt, the Philippines Department of Agriculture, etc. will be using 5,000 kilograms or 200 sacks. So if we look at the back of that truck, it's got 20 sacks on it. So you're looking at 10 of those trucks being mixed up, like how you see it being mixed up in the picture. Then it's loaded into some of them on the plane. And then you just put it out the back of the aeroplane. Over to India, India Science. There's a nine, ten minute video about cloud seeding for artificial rain. In the United Arab Emirates, Dubai lad. The UAE has been experiencing some pretty wild weather this week and it's all thanks to a prolonged spell of convective clouds and a little dash of cloud seeding. The NCMS are warning that there are more convective clouds in the region and they're still continuing their cloud seeding policy. Another one of these first ever experiments are going to be taking place for the first time ever. Just to be clear, it's the first time ever that this has happened, the first time ever. Harvard scientists plan first ever field experiment related to solar geoengineering. So as you can see in the picture, you recognize the face, Professor David Keefe from Harvard University. Now let's just have a listen to what David Keefe says about the experiment he is planning on carrying out. And this is from when he spoke at Yale University. I divide things into thinking about the risks and the efficacy. And I'm just, the risks I happen to have listed are for stratospheric sulfates, but there's lots of other technology. But the risks to me, in the way I'm thinking about it, are the things that are kind of the direct side effects of the way you do, the particular way you might do the radiative forcing. So if you put sulfate aerosols in the stratosphere, for example, some of them are going to rain down the troposphere, and they're going to add to air pollution and kill people. And in fact, myself and Steve Barrett at MIT are calculating how many people uh, will be killed. So let's go through what he said. If you put sulfate aerosols into the stratosphere, geoengineering, for example, some of them are going to rain down the troposphere, and they are going to add to air pollution and kill people. So the person in this picture is stating himself that if he is allowed to carry out the experiment, he is going to carry out via Harvard. He has spoken at Yale, stating that that experiment will add to pollution and kill people. So David Keefe is announcing that he is basically attempting murder. Someone in America 
you need to phone your police up and just report that because David Keith, by his own words, is planning on killing people. He's a danger to the public. He needs to be arrested. Good luck with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.